Today you're going to get a behind the scenes look on a mixing session in Pro Tools. Firstly you're going to hear a before and after on a professional mix and then I'm going to show you each individual track, um, which plugins I used, how I used them to achieve that transformation. This is going to help you to get an understanding of the thought processes that go into a professional mix and the tools that are used. I'm using Pro Tools to demonstrate but whatever door you're using this will be helpful to you if you're learning how to mix. Now let's dive in. So here we are in the mix, about 16 tracks on this one. I'm going to give you a before and after now. You'll hear with you'll hear it with no plugins and then you'll hear the transformation after the mix. So as you've heard, of course, it makes a huge difference once we've mixed it. Quite a psychedelic uh, kind of alt rock sound on this song. The client wanted a really roomy vocal. So when I started the mix, of course, I got everything set up um, on individual tracks. I got everything sent to uh, individual buses and everything. Um, and then I did a general level balance. I had to retain some of that. When you were hearing the uh, pre-mixed version, you did hear some of the level balancing and panning in place, the static mix, because I can't get rid of that but I've just put all the level balancing back on you, you'll be able to hear a slight difference now the vocals have gone up so I'm on the path to The most important thing is getting uh, a good balance before you get started. And at this point, no plugins are used. Then after I finished that static mix, I started mixing the buses. So the mix bus that all of the tracks go through, the guitar buses, the keys, the drums. Um, we're going to be putting some plugins on those buses. Don't worry, we will get to the individual instruments. But by mixing the buses first, you can make a huge amount of progress in a very short amount of time. You can shape the tone of the whole thing really quickly. So let's start with the mix bus. Um, let's just play through the whole thing and I'm going to bring these plugins and explain to you what they are and, and the reason I use them. So first the whole thing is going through the Kramer tape, uh, master tape. Um, tape emulation plugin. So this is just giving it more of a kind of tapey analog vibe, which I feel fit with the song. Um, and then after that, we've got the SSL channel, which is just a compressor and an EQ. I'm not using the compressor. I'm just EQing the whole mix a little bit. So let's see what I've done here. I've added a high pass filter, so we're cutting off everything below 30 hertz. There isn't even a bass in this song. There's a kick, um, but we don't really need that really low end energy, that that rumble, which is pretty much all we've, we're seeing there. And then I gave a little boost um, to, to the low end around 80 hertz and I cut 3 dB at around 400 hertz. Let's hear the difference. So I'm on the path to So it really tightens up those low mids, especially on the vocals there. Um, and of course, you, you don't want to be put doing too much. Um, you want to be keeping this subtle because it is affecting the whole mix. So just with that one plug in, um, it's making quite a bit of a bit of difference already. Then it's going through a compressor, the SSL master channel. We're just smoothing things out just a little bit, a two to one ratio. So I'm on the path to do a little bit of gain reduction and then we've got one more plugin on the mix bus but I'll, I put that on later in the mix so we'll go into that later in the video and then I went down to the drums here and got a little bit of compression on just to, to tame uh, to tame those dynamics so I'm on the path to gives a little bit of punch as well makes them feel a little bit more present. And then the rest of the bus mixing came later. We're going to go into the micro mixing stage now. I'm going to go through each instrument 
and and then show you what I've done to the done to them. So let's have a look at the kick first. So this is the original kick with nothing on. Um, it felt a little bit too, I don't know, it didn't have much body, wasn't particularly punchy. So I've duplicated that into this kick trig track and I put the Steven Sates trigger on it. So it's triggering a sample and I've blended the two of those together to get a lot more punch out of it. And then they're both, uh, well, the original one's gated and then they're both and then they both have a gate on them to get rid of some of the uh, the bleed from the rest of the drum kit. So we can bring that in. You can hear that that snare isn't quite so so loud in between uh, in between the kick hits. And then I EQ'd the pair of them. A little boost around 69, around 60 hertz, and a little bit of uh, a top end as well. lot more low-end punch there and then I also added the R bass just another couple of dB of subtle uh, low-end harmonics added on and then a tiny bit of smack attack transient shaper plug-in to give a little bit more punch there and then they're both going through the 1176 style compressor. Let's start bringing in the rest of the drums. The snare. Okay, so again, I've gated out uh, the bleed, added a bit of top end, cut out some of the lows as well, and compressed it again using the 1176 style compressor. This this slight digital revival helps shape the tone as well. It, it, it felt a bit flat. I wanted it to crack a little bit more and get some more punch as well with, with that. Let's bring in the overheads. Didn't have to do too much with those. You can hear it with the cymbal in over here. It's just being compressed. Um, mainly just to, to reduce the snare because I wanted the, the overheads mainly to be for the cymbals. So that my EQ changes were affecting just the cymbals and not, not the snare itself as much. So that kit's sounding really tight. Let's move on to the guitars, the main rhythm section. So first things first, I added a, well I duplicated it and added it a delay on the right hand one because it really helps widen it out. Give a bit of width to the whole mix. And then because they're the exact same track, I've put them through a bus and I've, uh, I've affected the bus. Um, what have I done? I've taken off some of the low end with a high pass filter and given it a bit of uh, a bit more high end with 3 dB boost on around 6k and then we're compressing it with with the SSL channel as well that's then going through the Santoy's decapitator uh, just to give it a little bit more grit. And then I've beefed it up because there's no bass in this song uh, and this is the main rhythm track throughout, I wanted to give it a bit more body. Now let's take a look at the vocals. Again, I'm going to solo these so you can really hear what's going on. So I've duplicated it um, because the reference track that the client gave me had quite a wide vocal sound. 
And then I've put a delay oh, on to widen those out. So we've cut a fair I amount of the low end off of these and quite a big I'm boost there. and six, uh, six dB boost around 4K. No just to brighten go. things up, make, make the vocals sound a bit more crispy. Then they're going through this Waves R comp, really nice smooth compressor for vocals. All those plans and a de for those harsh sibilant sounds. Then they're both going through the vocal bus where I've had a little bit of lo-fi, a little bit of grit to the vocals. You can really hear that breaking up. But it sounds really nice with the rest of the track. And then we've got the Kramer tape. I've, I've brought the noise and the wow and flutter down right to zero. I'm mainly using this for the slapback delay. So I'm on the path to derailment. Let's bring in the rest. And I can wait to unfeel it. I can't and then we're compressing so that again. Um, it's quite a dynamic vocal uh, vocal performance, so I'm compressing that again with the 1176, just a four to one ratio. So So it's really starting to shape up now. Um, the vocals, as you heard, are much more roomy um, when you heard the full mix. And if you stick with me, we will get to that in the next part. I'm going to be adding on some big reverbs and delays. But let's just have a quick look at the piano before we move on. So this has got kind of a lo-fi vibe to it, this piano, and I wanted to kind of capitalise on that a bit more. So. I've cut off some of the top end on this as well. Let's find a bit where there's some more piano. And then again, I've duplicated it and delayed it to widen things out. And then there's another piano over here where I've really gone lo-fi with it. You can use this this um, this technique to cut off loads of the top and, and bottom end to give it a kind of telephone lo-fi effect. And then we got some keys in there too, which I haven't done much with. It sounded fine. I just put a high-pass filter on, carved out some of the low mids and compressed it. Going to move on to the macro mixing stage, listening to the, the song as a whole, adding on our reverbs and delays, it's going to really transform the mix. I'm obviously going through this quite quickly to give you an overview, but I will share at the end a, uh, a series um, that I put together where I actually go through um, the entire mix process of another song and you'll hear, you'll, you'll see the process in action um, from scratch. So let's get some reverbs. Start with the drums and they're going through this whole reverb, so let's activate that. As you can see, we've got the snare and overheads going through it. The kick isn't, because I didn't want it to just start sounding muddy. And then we've got that guitar going through this warm chamber reverb. I've got the keys going through that same reverb. I try and keep the number of different reverbs relatively low, so it sounds like they're in the same room, if possible. Again, the client wanted a really roomy sound for this. I'm going to solo the vocals so you can really hear what's going on with these, uh, this reverb and delay. So it's going through this analog delay. Where is it? There we go. The Echo Boy. And then I put it through this Valhalla. A really long. A uh, really long and delay. Can wait to feel it. So that's just with the, the Echo Boy. 
and just prop me up. And you can hear that swell in the background. It sounds really cool. But then, so it didn't get too, too much. I've sent the vocals to a bus and I've signed, side chained it to the, um, to a compressor on that delay. So as you'll see and hear. So I'm on the path to derailment and I can wait to unfeel it. While the vocals are, while well, you can hear the vocals, it's dropping the, the level of delay by around 6 dB to stop it from getting too overpowering. And then it's been automated um, to increase the delay in, in the quieter sections. And then it's going through a plate reverb. I do like a plate on vocals. So I'm on the path to like I said, very and roomy mix. Can wait to unfeel it. And then the guitar and then the rhythm guitars are going through the chamber reverb as well. And the lead guitar, I've got a little bit of delay on there. Let's put everything together now. And then some extra little tweaks I made, some final touches. Uh, well, mainly with things like automation, where I've brought in the width of the guitar and, and increased the level just at the beginning because it's on its own. And then it opens out as the song begins. And as I mentioned, we've got some automation on the delays there. And then I also added on this one knob wetter, uh, this simple waves reverb plugin on the mix bus, just a small amount um, of reverb across the whole mix to really kind of glue it together, give it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more space. So I hope that helped you to get an understanding and just an overview of how a mixing session goes, um, the, the thought processes behind it. If you want a much more in-depth look on how I'd mix a song from scratch, uh, I'll leave a link on screen in the description to a full series right here on YouTube where you can see the full mixing process from raw recording to final product. Let me know in the comments section what kind of projects you're working on. And for more mixing tips and tutorials, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.